I was always a machinery man, so I kind of pursued and travelled the world driving machinery, really. Skipped the winters and chased the summers, really. What is crack everybody? Hope you're well. As you probably figured out by now, I am in Australia with Monk and Son Ag Services. Uh, Garrett reckoned I'd be at Notton back at HQ for the winter, so he decided he'd ship me off, get me to do a bit of filming down here. Um, this video really only covers a fraction of the silage making part of the business which is only a fraction of the whole business. The scale out here is just absolutely crazy. The amount of gear that Sam Monk has is just nuts. Uh, Sam Monk has been kind enough to put me up in accommodation while I'm here and he gave me this uh, pickup truck to drive around and try and see his operation. But it's, there's so much stuff, I don't know how long it'll take me to see it all. Months probably. The scale is just crazy. So thanks very much to Sam for that. He's a bit elusive though, I'm having trouble getting him on camera. He's, he's a bit camera shy, so I have to work on that one. I don't, I don't think we're going to see him in this video, but you never know. I might have to get Garrett over here to, uh, to get Sam on video. We'll see. Watch this space. Charlie, what's the crack? Oh, not much now, not much. <laughs> Nervous? <laughs> oh, I am now to be fair, yeah. yeah. So tell us the story anyway, how did you end up out here? Um, I was in America, Texas in America, working for you PMS. Find, you find that lovely now, didn't you? I did, yeah. yeah. You can what get a time to block it. <laughs> no, I um, decided I wanted to go to Australia, so I pretty much went down to Facebook and looked up 435 Australia and there was a video of Monk and Son Egg Services so I said I'd shoot him a message and Sam got back to me straight away to see when could I come out and, and he 
here ever since, really. Yeah, so you, did left, you come so straight from America here? Straight from America. I was in New Zealand before America and then went from America straight to here. So, yeah, it was just skipped the winters and chased the summers, really. Yeah, yeah. So you started off then on the loader? On the loader, yeah. I did it probably, oh, you could say three years on the loader for Sam and it's only the last two seasons, really. I've been on a chopper full-time farm, so keeps me busy. Yeah, and you have a 990. A 990, yeah. He must, he must like you. Oh, I don't know about that, though. <laughs> I don't know. Keep it in warranty if I'm driving it anyway, that's for sure. So when you're not driving this machine, then what else do you do? We'd be in the workshop. We do all the maintenance ourselves and all the choppers and that. So Anything yeah. we can do. So we very rarely see a, a class use our jeep in the yard, thank god, so try to do it all in-house. You're fairly handy on the spanners. Oh, I don't know about that now. <laughs> I don't know about that. We get it done anyway. And uh, where are both you from back home? I'm from a small place called Boards Mill, just five minutes outside of Trim, County Mead, so uh, a long way from home. Yeah, but have you got a, have you got a farm at home? Have you got a history in machinery, agriculture? I were dairy farming at home, still. My mother, she's running that that side of things at home so I was never really into the the cows as much I was always a machinery man so I kind of pursued and traveled the world driving machinery really yeah yeah so and um, you made it to the top now I don't know <laughs> this is the top I'd hate to see the bottom <laughs> mm. well I'm sure there's a lot of lads watching this now would love to be uh, in your seat at the minute oh absolutely no I'm blessed to be given the opportunity to drive the machinery I have been driven so Sam, he, he has a lot of trust in us to be fair and he, uh, he lets us try new things every day, so. Yeah, what are you, are you here six years now? Six years in September, so here a long time. But I can't see myself moving on anywhere anytime soon anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. And you have a good team of lads with you there, are the same lads with you all season? Yeah, thank God, no, I've, well they're all Irish in this crew and They've all kind of gelled together, big time to be honest, you know, when you're eating, sleeping, walking in the same youth every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, we probably want to kill each other some days, but <laughs> no, to be fair, you kind of have to gel as a team and get on with it really, you know. Yeah. The job has to be done at the end of the day. And do you always stay in a hotel or a motel? Motels, yes. Uh, we will book a, well, if, we find out where we're going or the nearest town or that we'll always try walking around where we can get breakfast in the morning or that but it's always motels there's um very rarely we'd kind of head back to cobden to stay on our houses or our accommodation sam has for us we're always gonna yeah yeah uh, like before i came over this was a pure last minute trip like there was yeah. no plan and no research done really it was like Text from Garrett, you were going to Australia this weekend. <laughs> that was it. But I was under the impression that you would be like pulling a big caravan slash trailer around with you and sleeping in that every night, but obviously not. No, no, That's no. It's kind of an American That thing, would be a, an American style thing, all right. Look at, there is probably some contractors out here that do do that, but no, Sam, he, he looks after us pretty good and he feeds us and houses us pretty well when we're on the road, so there's nothing we're short of. Yeah, he yeah, gets yeah. us whatever we need, we get, so he looks after us very good that way. So this silage you're lifting today, it doesn't really look like the stuff you'd be lifting at home. No, 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 this is a uh, lucerne. It's, uh, I don't know what you'd call it to be honest, but I know you get about six to eight cuts off it every year. It's, it's high in protein and is it a variety of a grass or is it kind of a cereal or it's a variety of a grass i think i'm yeah. actually not 100 percent sure i probably should have done a bit of research into it but <laughs> yeah uh, we leave you off of it <laughs> no thank god but a lot of it is they do a lot of the bale a lot of it out here as well yeah yeah but the american well they, they chop a lot of it in america they call that alfalfa yeah so it's the very same thing but oh it's seemingly very good for the dairy cows anyway they, they seem to love it so tractors in the fleet then is it mostly fast tracks mainly all fast tracks on the trailers he's got another three fast or three smith trailers last week so that brings him up to 18 triaxle smiths they're all the same size and all order. the very same yeah there was one posi steer here at the very start and that's now been converted just just a rear steer oh, so, right. yeah, yeah. but all fast tracks pulling them as well so they 
seemed to be the machine for the job really it kind of yeah much, the, much trouble from jcb no the dealership sam has anyway it's 10 out of 10 really they they're out to us straight away if we have a trouble and they have a spare machine always sitting there waiting for us so yeah yeah like you don't get a lot of breakdowns or anything not really a little bit of a blue trouble yeah. here and there but that's fairly typical with any make of tractor or truck car these days oh, like it's it's the like ruination of it all but yeah. no we're, we're blessed now well kind of the loaders and that there they're all out blue but they haven't given us any troubles too far anyway yeah. so yeah, and it's all JCB loaders as well, is it? All 435s, yeah. It's, um, it seems to be that the king of the clamp, anyway. There's a, a, our man on the pit there today. He's a Volvo man, but we'll get him. Might be converted. We might convert him over, yeah. So. There'll surely be some 457s on the way next year, will there? I don't know. I, I'd like to see one. Yeah. I'd like to see one. I'll look at knowing Sam, he'll, he'll surely pull one out of the bag, anyway. He has a shiny metal disease. <laughs> yeah, I see that, right? I see a few John Deere's around the yard as well, though, and a class the other day when I was there. There's many, many other tractors besides the fast tracks there. The mainly Fent. Fent would be his number one choice of tractor, but he's got a lot of, yeah, the John Deere's, all M series. He won't, uh, won't buy anything else but an M series with John Deere, so. All right. Just reliable. Yeah, yeah. So I reckon R stands for repair. <laughs> so, just a few boys more like that now. Oh, look at <laughs> I'm bagging John Deere out here and I have a John Deere hat on, but you look at No, them M series have been very reliable tractor to be honest. They do a lot of the raking and do all the bailing, really, you could say. Yeah. A couple of them there, the 195s, they're running triple mowers and that there. Well, they go real good to be honest. So, yeah, and then. You have a big M on your crew here, but that's the only big M of the fleet, is it? That's the only one, yeah. So look at it, he's not tied to us by any means. It's kind of, he was over this direction, so he got the, the job of mowing this job, but kind of you could have a different mower every job, you know. All oh, right, okay. It's, yes. it's whoever's in the area, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, it's just, well, I like following the big M there. It leaves a lovely row out of them groupers, so. And why, why does he not have more big M's, do you reckon? Or? I'm not too sure, to be honest. It was, I think that was a last minute decision. He was waiting on fence to come into the country. Yeah. He had an order of fence in, and they were late coming, and there was a big M up the country at a dealership, and I think he just said he'd take it, and so far, so good, anyway. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So far, so good. Like, they are the machine for the job, to be fair, like. They are, yeah. What kills it out here, I reckon, is the 40k road speed. Oh, yes, We do yes, a lot yes. of, as you know yourself, coming from Cobden yesterday, yeah. we cover a lot of ground. So. Yeah. But as if you had your, say, 65k, 930 or that there, you'd, you'd tear up the road and no bother. Yeah. yeah, I suppose that is their, the one Achilles heel, right? That's it, that's it. And when you're moving this from job to job then, this goes on the back of a lorry? This goes onto a lorry, yeah. So we throw the the chopper and the loader up onto the, the same low loader and send her on our way. Do you drive so, the lorry or is there...? I drive the lorry every now and again, whenever it has to be driven. Yeah, yeah. There is set guys on it there for harvest. So they're pretty busy at the minute. They're up and down the road like yo-yos. Oh, so they have to come to you to lift the... Uh, yeah. Chopper and loader, like you don't have your own truck sitting there waiting every time. No, no, so oh, yeah, we'll yeah. be kind of in talks with Sam there and kind of giving him a time when we're going to finish and he'll organise a truck to be there with the ramps down ready for us to drive up onto. Yeah, yeah. So, no, it, it works out pretty good to be honest. So there's, there's two floats on the road and yeah, either or come and lift us. and. Float now is a low loader and a float in is our a, terms, is it? Yeah, yeah, a float is a low loader and Arms, so there's so you run the Kemper header, Kemper head, yeah. What do you think of it? I like it to be honest. I am um, haven't had any real trouble with it this year, to be honest. So, Charlie, the other he'd be, we call him the older Charlie, but he's uh, he ran one last year and was very impressed with it, lasted the full season, and yeah, had no jams at all. So, Sam, he went and ordered two of them this year. and. So far, so good. It feeds a lot better and it'll last the season. 
and it looks the business as well. It does. They look class yeah. in front of them. They look very good now. At, at, the start, at the start, I wasn't too too gone on it. I thought it stuck out an awful lot, but no, it's grown on me now. And I think a class head looks different on them now altogether. Yeah. Maze heads then, is it all camper? All camper, small drum. So, mainly the small drum because we can fit them on the float with the loader. She's a bit tight for room, but no, there's what is there? There's two 12 rows, two 12 rows, a 10 row, and two 8 rows there, so they all do see an out in every year. Yeah, would the maze campaign be long here? Would it be a couple of weeks, a couple of months? Oh, uh, they'd go probably, you'd like to be starting maze there probably mid to end of January, and she'll run right through to. Probably March, I'd say, March, end of March. Yeah. So it all kind of depends, really. We do a lot, we'll start up north, probably, I don't know, probably 13 or 14, 100 kilometers from our base, and we'll slowly work our way down. Yeah, yeah. So. But I hear the season is going to be running a bit late this year, it's not it's going to be January, really, no, is it? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. It's just been too wet to get corn in the ground early, so. Yeah, I, I don't know when it's going to start, to be honest. We'll get grass over and done with first, I suppose. So, yeah. It's, it feels like a long season, but it's no, it's been pretty good. You, you cover a lot of ground with eight choppers on the go, so. And sure, the bad weather the bad weather days give you a chance to go for a few points as well. Points is right, yeah. <laughs> but it's mainly, look at we get, you get onto your maintenance straight away in the mornings and depends how serious that is now. You, you will, you'll get into into the local town there or wherever you are for a couple of pints and see where it takes you, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. so for any, any of the young lads there at home that dream about coming out, you reckon send Sam a message or a Facebook page a message and get onto the Facebook on, onto page the list for next year. 100%. <laughs> I'd say she'll be a, a pretty big list now, to be honest. But yeah, yeah. No, he gives every man a chance, so yeah. definitely. Now, now we have it, lads. So, Charlie, thanks for chatting to us, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you again later on in the season. Absolutely. Wherever I end up in the next yeah. few weeks, God knows. <laughs> but, uh, it's a mystery yeah. tour for you. Yeah, fact, yeah. <laughs> but uh, thanks anyway. No bother, 100%. I'm not going to introduce myself, am I? <laughs> no, I'm definitely not. <laughs> How I ended up here was, um, there was actually three local men at home. Uh, one in particular was out here for a number of years, so he was, and um, we were changing a diesel filter inside in the yard at home one day. We got chatting, and Australia always had a sort of an attraction to me, and um, we were talking to Monkey over the phone one day, and he was an absolute gentleman, so uh, the dream sort of came alive from then. So I had come out here, but, uh, Nine weeks ago there now, hey, so I'm trying it ever since. Yeah, yeah. You said there was three boys at home. Where, where's home, do you know? Uh, just outside Castlebany there, five minutes, wee village called Anniella. Uh, uh, I won't ask what uh, colour the diesel was in the filter, yeah. so. <laughs> uh, I'm saying, I'm saying nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't blow right my face there, can you? <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, there's one of them there. I stayed out here for a few years. He's over chopper and that, and uh, just look at it. Was always, uh, was always an interest there, so. Yeah. And what's the... What's the plan now for the, the winter? We'll say you're going to stay here. Or you're going to got something else, or what's? I'm not going to do a winter at home. Hey, the cowl. See the cowl. Ah, yeah, we'll uh, be somewhere at home, and it's winter here. You see, so are you yeah. going to stay here? You are. I uh, know the plan is to stay here all right. Uh, yeah, and do do uh, get the 24 months there out of it. Also, uh, after two years, then we'll see we'll see how things progress. See where we're, where we're at. Did you get straight on the fast track when you came out, or did you have to kind of prove yourself on something smaller first, or? Ah no, we uh, we were actually in the machinery shed there for a long time. So we were servicing, and getting stuff ready there, and uh, it just happened to be one day there was a set of keys. To, sort of handed that to you. It didn't really know what was going on, and um, straight in the fast track. Happy out ever since. And under a fair machine like this, is my first time driving one of these fast tracks. Obviously, we have a four two twenty and a, an older three one eight five back in the air, but yeah. I've never driven one of these size ones. Fairly similar inside now, to be fair, but they're yeah. fair lump, they're fair height, and everything like that. They are just a serious lump of metal, like. That's what I'm saying. You're almost sitting up at lorry level, aren't you? But uh, they're, a, they're a fairly straightforward machine inside, like basic inside. But she, she does everything you absolutely need to do. And once you get her 70k on the road, three bodies heading maybe 
seven or eight hour of a journey, which is which is fair comfort now. Yeah. What's the longest what's the longest journey you've had to take it on between jobs? Uh, we were up north there at the start of the seasons we were and uh, we actually head down to Mount Gambria there in South Australia and it took us uh, 13 and a half hours. But um, yeah. it's seen as a half day's work here, the Aussies there, so um, oh, it was fairly enjoyable. You got to see, look at, for a place like this here, you get to see half of Australia outside the, your, your window and it's absolutely beautiful, so it is, so. Yeah, yeah. the visa then, did you, like, is it hard to get a visa or? Yeah, so it was fairly straightforward for us. To, the ladies in the office are absolutely brilliant as well. I know for uh, leaving to go to a different country in the whole lot, uh, it can be seen as a daunting thing, like, but the ladies are so so helpful there, so they would let sort the whole thing out for you. They you are. I met them the other morning, like, they're gas, aren't they? The two girls. Ah, they're great women, they're great women, in fairness. They'll never see you right. If you have any, any to turn into any old wild handlings, they'll set you state, they'll help you out the best they can. So, um, the visa was fairly straightforward, thank God. So. Yeah, so it's all everyone is done by the ton over here. Yeah, so most places they are, because uh, it has to be heavy there, be sold or be charged or priced on the ton, all right. Yeah, there's very few places on the Hector all right. But um, every yoke's fitted with uh, the way it sells there, so it's, uh, there's a record kept then, so yeah, it's, um, it's a handy enough system, so it is. It's a, it's, well, it's fair anyway, it's fairer than the way it's done Rome, I suppose. Yeah, like. it's fair on the farmer then, so he's, he's, he's charged on what he grows himself, like, you know, yeah, so it's, yeah. he has some, some sort of control there. And he knows what he has in the pit. He knows what he has, yeah. Yeah, well. yeah. So, um, yeah, just this year now, every farmer's just be glad to get something into the pit there, so if the whole thing finishes up before us, the 22nd of January there, we get into Melbourne and see Marty Moe. Huh? Oh, yeah. Is he coming out for a shed party? He's coming out for a shed, well, he, he's coming out there, to, and he's selling out a few, uh, he's doing Perth, Melbourne, Sydney, a couple of places, Brisbane there as well. There, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we may clear out now the uh, machinery shed there, have them into it maybe, uh, get a few of the customers back there and we'll, we'll have a bit of a do ourselves. Two slip coaches for two hours, Davey. Must be a record, is it? No, it's not actually. <laughs> <laughs> when they're readily available, he can only do anything <laughs> up to four. <laughs> would you usually get more done today when Davey's not mowing? Well, if Davey's not mowing, we'd normally get more done, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's trying to mow for two hours, so he's just not fit for anything, Dave. The Lord's working. <laughs> Let the pressure get to you, Dave, when you're cracking under it. You must have a shower and a drink or had you? Pack, pack yeah. a raban clutch. <laughs> <laughs> silly, silly Dave. Is this the same one? Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. On a Sunday. <laughs> well, they're, they're just not there anymore doing their job. They're just spinning free inside them. Yeah, the lugs are absolutely blowing smithereens. Yeah. Um, do you know is there any of them in the yard, or have you any with you? Uh, what's, yeah, yeah. Tell us what's wrong with it. So, um, it's supposed to have two lugs on it that come out and catch this casing. Yeah. So it doesn't spin completely free. But it's not there anymore. Are you saying it's actually not Davy's fault? <laughs> it's not technically Dave's fault, that's tons. Dave is, Dave is a man for the tons. Uh, get it done any which way. Did you get the haircut on for this? I did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, you're you're going well today. You're going better than the last day I met you. Oh yeah, and yeah. And What's uh, what happened there the last day? Ah, oh, just my my clutch kept on burning out. There, I, I don't know. I'd say the clutch plant, I'd say, or something was 
Yeah, but I saw people caught in the last day. Like that was that was dog heavy. Oh, too dog know? heavy. Yeah, it was just the ground was a slightly bit wet as well. So I got a reconditioned uh, clutch pack. I was in very bad form though that day. <laughs> I was not. No, I was a very unhappy man. Uh, you're in good form today, though. Oh yeah, very good. Yeah, two choppers on the move all day and yesterday. So keeping you under pressure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to be fair, I, I've had a good season though, so far I've probably just under 4,000 4, hectares of mud. Yeah, yeah. So... What you making the mud crack in there? Is it a good job? Oh, definitely a good job, yeah. Good says, experience. Says me here, sitting here, doing nothing. Doing nothing, yeah. <laughs> you, don't know what to, you don't know what to do with your two hands and yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Um, How long are you here? When did you start with Sam? Uh, I... Well, I started off in New Zealand in, say, September last year. And then I was going home last April and Sam put up an ad looking for a driver for the maze. So I said I'd give it a go for a month. Yeah. And yeah, it was whatever, 10 months later I'm still here. You're still here. Yeah. So did you really experience more and then before you came from? I did a small bit of uh, double moors in New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah. Pottinger moors. Yeah, so it's all class butterfly moors, Sam has. All class, yeah. Everything is class. Bear the big game, obviously. Bear the big game, yeah. Yeah, but he did try out Crown Butterfly Moors one time, did he? He did once upon a time, yeah, but I don't think he, he didn't like him, I don't yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, uh, to be fair, it's hard to beat the class Moors. Sure, the oldest set of butterflies here, what were you saying? Hectares were up in that, it was such big anyway. Ah, uh, 21,000 hectares. Yeah, they would have been what? Probably they have been maybe five seasons. There's probably five, five sets of butterfly butterfly class moors there now this year. Oh that's what's there, five sets? Five sets and then you have the non-conditioner moors, there's probably three sets of them. And then you have your big M. You have the big M. So you're trying to keep the front of nine uh, Nine choppers, choppers yeah. How would you end up on the moor? Was it literally just kind of keys were handed to you one day and you were going more and that's it? I was heading to South Australia on a rake. And I was leaving that morning and then next thing about a half what was I doing? I got up in the rake and they showed me how to use it what not. Got down off it next thing Sam came over and said, you're going up North Moon. And I was out of the air and a half an hour later. Yeah, yeah. And you're on more since? I'm on more since, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. What's your reckon now New Zealand Australia? Which is better? Oh, uh, Probably Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Better crack like in... You're know, working for Sam, like it's, it's a completely different experience. Like, you get to travel a lot of Australia as well. Like, yeah, how far Sam. away from base have you been now? Europe North. Um, the, season, yeah. the furthest I went would have been during the winter there. I would have went to South Australia, spread and dung. That was about seven or eight hours away in the yeah, car. Yeah. Do you reckon you'll stay on here another season or two and turn it into a harvester um, or a shopper or...? I don't really know, like... There's a lot of... There's a lot behind the driving a chopper, like, Joe, you'd have to be good mechanically. And, you, like, you're... The lads driving choppers here, like, they're not just driving the chopper, they're like a manager, a team leader, and oh, kinda, they're, they're, they're running well, the crew of men, like, and women. Anyway, they... They don't want to be able to fix their own chopper, like, and source out their own problems, and be able to run a team like there's a bit to it isn't there like oh there is an awful lot to it yeah 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 so you're not really mowing in front of Danny Ryan the whole time you know no I'm mowing in front of everyone you could be anywhere it's like anywhere it yeah yeah it depends like where yeah Danny Ryan and Martin Van Der Andlen are uh Martin Van Der Andlen, yeah they're chopping here today yeah they're keeping me um they're keeping me under pressure Actually, I'm doing under pressure here, Davey. Huh? I'm doing this under all the pressure here. Oh yeah, when you I was going for a yeah. nice easy driving lesson on the moors, and oh, there's two choppers <laughs> roaring up behind you there. Uh, two, I'm sure that's a 990. That's a 990 What's the other one? What's and a 950, is it? 950, yeah. Yeah. Right, Davey, we'll leave it at that. Thanks yeah. for chatting. No matter sure we'll see you for a uh, schooner was under Christmas anyway. Oh, without, without <laughs> a shadow of a doubt. <laughs>
eight hours with legs in. <laughs> <laughs> Is this how it works, Aaron? The boys get to drive the harvest at the odd time if they uh, do, do the dirty work for you. If they do pick up times. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the better apprentice driver? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> what about putting a man on the spot like that? <laughs> I'll, I'll come back. I'll come back and ask you when they're not around. Yeah, come on, Andrew. <laughs> oh, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Where'd you learn to use your fingers like that? <laughs> <laughs> What's you from back home? Uh, Armagh. Right, so you're not a million miles away from Grassman HQ? No, I wouldn't be that far to be honest, no. You're a long way from it now though. Aye, uh, a very long way. <laughs> what brought you out here? Or how long are you here even? Uh, I've here over four years. Um, just wanted something different. I, uh, I was only out here about six months and I was home for two weeks and I haven't been home since. Yeah, I suppose Covid kind of... Aye, yeah, that made a job. big difference off it on it all too, yeah. So I was out filming yesterday, you didn't have a great day. A very bad day yesterday. <laughs> Tell us what happened yesterday. Oh, uh, between the warm weather and things going wrong. And if there was a day for something going wrong, it was yesterday. Tractors breaking down. Nothing, nothing major, just oil pipe. No, well it was mostly the loader. Just had, yeah. The rads had to be blew out every, every so often because of the heat. Yeah, it was 30 plus degrees yesterday. And Same today, I think. Well, I feel it anyway. Um, he was in an outer bunker with walls and just couldn't get enough airflow into her to keep her cool. And another thing yesterday, dry grass. It's got too dry in you. You never yeah. see that at home. Like you have to, you have to go away and leave uh, leave the grass until the dew comes in on it. Yeah, chapel with the dew at night time. Yeah. Is that fairly common over here? Hey, not too often. The old time there, and the them winds pick up and it turns quick on you. But Normally not too bad, normally we don't let it, normally we pull in the merge and just merge it straight up. Okay, trying to not let it get away like that. Yeah, so you'll only let the more a half an hour, half an hour ahead of you. Yeah, the likes of this warm weather, yeah. So have you been working for Sam since came out four years yeah, ago? No, I was over the other side of Melbourne there. So it was over that side of Victoria, sorry, not Melbourne. I was over there for a year and a half and I've been with Sam then ever since that. What are you like? Driving machines over there? Yeah, it's contracting over there too for a smaller contractor over there. Um, and I was going to go home then, and I said I wanted to do a season with Sam before we went home. And I've uh, been here ever since. <laughs> it's like a rite of passage. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. seems to be the way though, like it's like, do you know, when lads all go to Australia, it's Eilish, Monk and Son. Yeah. Is the spot like? Yeah, you either love it or you hate it. <laughs> yeah, like I remember years ago when I went to New Zealand for a few months, but when I was looking at it at the time, like there was no such thing as going to Australia at silage. It was all New Zealand, New Zealand. Whereas now it's Australia, yeah. Yeah, Sam Sam Monk is like, do you know, the spot to go like? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it is a good place to work for any young fella hey, or any young girl. Yeah. Definitely would you recommend it? You would. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah, you'd be mad not to. You want. And I see there's so far I've seen people of kind of every age, like young lads, 18 upwards. Oh yeah. There's women, there's girls here. Alison is on your crew here today. Something for everyone really. Yeah, isn't there? definitely. Hey, yeah, hey, even if you don't drive tractors, there's still jobs here. Hey, doing stuff. So there is. Yeah. What about back home, then? Did you have much of history driving machines? Were you ever driving a harvester back uh, home? I driven wee bits at home. Hey, uh, nothing serious now. Very little. Um, very little now at home compared to here. Uh, done a lot of mowing and that at home, more so. Uh, and did you go mowing here when you came first? Yeah, that's what I started off with, yeah. with Sam, I was mowing. And uh, got the opportunity to try the harvest there and tuck it. Up into the big league? I uh, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you be hoping for 990 next year? No, I'd stay with the 970. <laughs> Is there much of a difference, you know? Hey, this is the exact same engine is in it? this that's in the 990. Um, just she would have more horsepower, so 
question would. How old is this machine and how many hours are on it? Um, this machine is, this is our second grass. And she's uh, coming up on uh, working, uh, it's 2,000 hours on her there now. 2,000? Yeah, just 2,000 on her. So she has a grass, a maze, and she's in her second grass season, yeah. was it? Yeah. 2,000 hours, yeah, that's... Yeah. She didn't even do the first year she came, she, or last year, she didn't even do autographs, she might have, she might have missed the bump or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she just wasn't ready, like, she was in, but she, she just wasn't ready. What do you reckon between the fence and the fast track? What would you prefer, what's... The fast track, yeah, I'd be the same now. Yeah. Most lads are saying the fence, but... Uh, I think the fast track, just because it's as close as you can get to a lorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, for steadiness and that, hey, you're probably better off with... Uh, on the road, you're probably better off with your fast track, to be honest. Yeah, what about in the field, though? Yeah, fast track's pretty travelling pretty good now, to be yeah. honest. So they do. But there's nothing wrong with the fence either, they're still doing a good job. Yeah. Uh, they both look well now, either way. I see you had to call in a bit of, a bit of backup for the... For the pit yesterday the evening? Pit, yeah, I've got a nice tractor in there with a set of jewels on it. The concrete walls helped them yesterday. But that's very rare out here to see, like concrete slabs, concrete walls. Oh. Even that, that cattle fattening shed, that'd be rare enough out here. Yeah, like, what yeah, yeah that, they call it a feed lot or something. So yeah. They, yeah, it'd be very, uh, yeah, it's not something you come across very often. They like having them out in the, in the paddocks. Like, would there only be a handful of yards where you would have uh, a bunker like that? It's only the second one I know of anyway. Oh, Alright, it's, yeah. it's that rare like? Yeah. Yeah, they normally just build it in the side of the field. <laughs> yeah. When you're not driving this machine then, what are you, what are you up to? Uh, either in the workshop getting them ready to go again or I'll jump in the truck and uh, drive the truck there uh, with a float. Oh yeah, so you would move this and the load around yourself in the, yeah, in the yeah, truck? Yeah, yeah, from time to time, yeah. Way moving diggers and stuff too. Would you like that kind of work? I don't mind it. Hey. It's yeah. good to get it something different there too, so it is. We had the lorries before you came over here, like? Uh, I got it at home. I've done the test at home, hey, but I never really used it that much. Yeah. Um, so I didn't. I used to bits and pieces here and there, but it came in handy whenever I came out here, put it like that. Yeah, but did you have to, uh, when you come out here, your Irish truck license not fully. Uh, so you have to reset another test out here, do you? Yeah, so uh, it, it does you for a while. Just going ahead with that fight. Uh, it does. It, it covers you for so long, six months or something. Yeah. And then after that, you have to for your truck test, you have to sit a sit a test. All oh, right. But okay. it's handy enough. Like, it's it's only a day, I think. Yeah. And it brings you back up to your Arctic again. It's not the same kind of rigmarole as at home, like. Oh no, not a, no. It's just like a bike sitting beside the way you are here. Yeah. With one of them cameras, hey. Five hours you drive around. It wouldn't even be four or five hours, two hours max. Yeah. Take a bit of getting used to the trucks out here. Yeah, a bit different boxes. now. Yeah, a bit different now to home. I haven't had a go one yet now, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you surely, surely get a go one at some stage. Yeah, you'll have to. Um, once you get used to it, it's a great job. Yeah, but getting used to it. Just leave the clutch alone and just throw gears at her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This job you're in now, it's actually like 900 acres ish. Yeah, it's just under a thousand, yeah. 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 Like surely that like even for over here that's that's a big job, is it? Oh that is a big job, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like a thousand acres, sure like at home there's a lot of contractors in Ireland, well down south anyway, and like a thousand acres is their whole first cut that's, like. Yeah. Some guys might only lift a thousand in a year. Yeah, and you're doing it in one job. Yeah. In what what, four four or five days? Four or five days, days yeah. yeah. I actually caught you doing a bit earlier on there, blowing out rads and air filters. And <laughs> is that like, would you have to do that now a few times a day or just once a day oh, here? Or? Once a day there anyway, yeah. 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 Especially at the minute being so hot. Yeah. Uh, you like to try and keep the well blue down to be honest. Yeah. Would you drop the head now and clean her down and blow her down? Yeah, we try Every uh, few days as well? Yeah, you nearly try. You, you might not open her every day, but. Uh, every other day you'd be up and her up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you'd definitely be dropping the head off and cleaning her all down there every yeah, day. Yeah. Whereas at home, like, you, you throw her up for the season, she's good to go, you don't want to see it again till... Until, until next year. Yeah, or at least till the end of your first cut or whatever, like. Yeah. I've yet to see a crone uh, chopper since I came here. Is yeah. there any crones in Australia or what's going on there? 
Yeah, uh, there's there'd be one or two kicking around now. There wouldn't be that many all together. Um, but yeah, no, Chrome wouldn't be that overly big now in Australia, to be honest. Yeah, I'm surprised at that now, to be honest. Like, uh, I thought the big X's would be in their element out here. Yeah. But maybe it's just they haven't broken into the market yet, or they haven't got the dealer back up, or whatever. Yeah, that could be it, I am. This is our rye grass again, is it? Yeah. So is, is this <coughs> re-sown every year, or is it a, like normal grass that just keeps uh, going back? I'm pretty sure, I'm 90% sure that it's sown every year. Yeah. There might, be, there might be some of it that you can get two years out of. Yeah. But I think a lot of it's to do with your weather and how hot it gets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but most of it's all re-sown. Very little people put in a, perm a permanent grass, like because of the hot weather, just burns it all off. Oh, all right, during yeah, the yeah, summer yeah. there, yeah, I think it just kills it. So I don't think there's any point in putting in a, a permanent grass seed. Yeah. Well, James, what's your story? Sure, like any other fella, came over for the madness. <laughs> <laughs> you happy with it? Ah, you having sure. fun? Living the dream. Living the dream. Well, you're a long way from uh, from uh, Tony O'Mahony's and your Fleet T7s now. I know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm after upgrading or downgrading, but <laughs> I'm quite happy with what it is. I know. <laughs> yeah, you like the fent? Oh, I love it. Love it. Sporting a new set of back tires as well. Yeah. Very like as in as in <laughs> yeah, yeah. five minutes old like. Uh, Let's see what they're like in the field now in a couple more minutes. Yeah, what happened there? We just got a puncture and they said two new tyres. Yeah, uh, rang Billy up, said I got a puncture, and he said, yeah, don't worry, send on a pinpoint. And all I knew, two new tyres landed out. So. What are they, Coulter? I think so. They're on the front of the wild there. Don't know much about them, wouldn't say they're a bad tyre. They're the ones that keep me afloat in it, I don't get stuck. It's the main thing. Yeah, I see two lads there, obviously local tyre centre. It must be the only thing Sam doesn't do himself is tyres, is it? <laughs> Not sure, but I'd say things are so busy now, you don't have time to get around to it. Yeah. So, here the main thing, we're back up and going now. In a when you were out first, you were drawing in a bit of pit grass. Small bit, yeah. You were well used to the super cubes anyway. Yes, yeah. A bit of experience on them, right? Yeah. Did you get sick of it? Yeah, you know, the grand drawing in grass was the same thing over and over, at least with the baler. You can, uh, it has its all fusion moments. Yeah, you don't mind being off on your own, like you wouldn't rather be in the crew, lads, or whatever, no? No, oh, sure it's a grand, sure if you always, there's there always someone close by, and you know, you're kind of your own boss. And yeah, you probably have a rake with you most of the time anyway, do you? 90% of the time, some farmers rake their own. But you know, what I like about the baler, you're actually getting to meet the farmer and see a different style of farming, where when you're pit silage, you don't see any of that, because it's not your job to be talking to the farmer. Yeah. So, no, I quite like it there now, being on the baler last week or so. Yeah, so you've, what, a week done on the baler now? Yeah. How many bales have you done? Around 3,700 or something, I think. It's a fair week, like. <laughs> it's been busy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, had you much experience on a, a fusion tree? Or, or any baler, actually? Yeah, it was actually, I only draw a fusion tree at home as well with the last two years. And that was it, really, when I came... It was two weeks ago, alright, I was supposed to come on the Fint Balers here, the Belt Balers. I've done a day on that, alright, but I'm happy by to go back onto the Fusion. Yeah, so I see the three, actually three Fint Balers out together this morning, three yeah. Belt Balers. What you make of the Belt Baler? Good job, bad job. Ah, they're, fine. Any... They're, they're fine for what they're doing, like, but... Uh, yeah. Are they are they better suited for the tube wrapper out here? Right? They seem to be kind of like... I think so, that they, they said the bale has to be a bit bigger or something for the tube wrapping. Yeah. Know, but, um... The diffusion is, just takes it in a whole lot better than Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're out here representing the Irish baler. You're yeah, yeah. <laughs> it takes an Irish lad to drive an Irish baler. <laughs> uh, and what about this contraption sticking out the back of it then? What's... Oh, that, uh, yeah, that, that's a uh, handy eye, I suppose, and hilly ground. What's it do? Turns the bale up on its head? It turns it up on the edge, I'd say. Just handier for farmers to pick up out here, really. Yeah. But... Um, it's a bit slower right for me because it's come to a dead stop every time to leave off the bale. No, I see it is handy in hilly ground, but if you look around, there's not too many hills for it to try it out on. Well, yeah. What have you been baling so far? Is it all light paddocks or would you be baling heavy crops and stuff? Uh, we've done a lot of fellas, have done a lot of first cut that 
two farmers they, they normally cut it with a chopper, but it's grown so wet they'll just have to bail it this year. Yeah. So that was that was heavy stuff. Heavy enough, but it still wouldn't be anything like first cut at home bailing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The kind of aim out here they said is six bales an acre. Right, sure. yeah, that'd be that'd be a bad <laughs> second cut at home, like. Yeah, to be fair, take out paddocks saying you've got two francs for the cows, and you might get that at home out of it. Yeah, yeah, like here today, I know you're just kind of cleaning up paddocks for all Cleaning up a bit of paddocks. There's a small bit of he heavy stuff right to do, but just mostly kind of just cleaning up after the cows, try to get through as fast as we can, get on to the next job. Yeah, and you plan on staying out for for a few months, for a couple uh, sure, of years. I suddenly left home. I come for six months. I, it's my first time away from home. I don't know how I'd get on, but and I'd stay for a year now, and uh, do not. It's actually not much different to, to home. So you see, I was left inside the pub the other night. There wasn't one Australian fella. It was all Irish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Were you like me you now? Did you come out thinking it was going to be like 35, 40 degrees every day and bring only shorts and t-shirts? Yeah, I had to go. Uh, there was a mad panic there the second week to go buy uh, jeans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was the same. Uh, I, I, I fell into the same trap myself. Yeah, and they said I don't get that warm below here. We kind of have to go up for the Sydney that way to get the heat, which is grand, sure. It's already about 21 today and it's still nice, you know. Oh, it's a lovely day today. Now, it was up around 30 one day I was here so far, but... Yeah, but, our, you know, it's just, just not nice to work in too much heat either. So but I'm uh, sure everyone here is aircon anyway. Yeah, <laughs> let's get well tested there some days. No, I like it down here because it's a bit like home, the weather, so... Would you recommend, you know, any lad to come out and give it a go and... Oh, definitely, definitely, just some experience. Yeah. You know, like I was saying... It, I was going to come out three years ago and just humming and hawing and I'm sorry I didn't come out before. Yeah. You know, you just have the independence out here and stuff as well and, you know, there's so much opportunities out here for, for anything. So. And once, even if you have a three months done here, you can move on to the city or yeah. whatever and go building or. Sure, that's it too, like, but, you know, you'd actually be happy out here. Do you mind being away from home for Christmas now? No, not really. Yeah, not you're really, probably sure. hoping to go to the pub Christmas Day, I suppose. Yeah, you know, just be first time, you know, we'd actually be a pub open Christmas Day. I'm sure Christmas Day is always kind of boring at home, you can't do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, James is a rake man now coming, probably looking for you, so <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Go catch him. Thank you. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my head. Sunrise.